completing carrier-related fields in the CR3 crash form. From 2015 to 2019, there were 21,107 fatal motor vehicle crashes involving a CMV in the United States, of which 13% occurred on Texas roadways. Given the size of the CMV crash problem in Texas, there is a critical need for Texas crash data to be as complete and accurate as possible. Several safety stakeholders use CRIS data to identify and address traffic safety problems involving large trucks. This data-driven approach is only effective if it has a foundation of high-quality data. Incorrect or incomplete data can lead to missing the most important problems or the application of less effective countermeasures. Funding and personal resources may also be misdirected. What is a commercial motor vehicle? Let's start by defining a CMV. According to the Texas Transportation Code, a CMV is any motor vehicle or towed vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating, GVWR, or a registered gross vehicle weight, RGVW, whichever is greater of 10,001 pounds or more, or any combination of vehicles where the gross combined weight rating or the total RGVW of the combination is 10,001 pounds or more. Any vehicle with a passenger seating capacity of nine or more, including the driver and used for the transportation of persons. Any motor vehicle hauling hazardous material that is required to be placarded under the Hazardous Materials Transportation Act. The CMV section in the CR3 is designed to collect information regarding the involvement of commercial motor vehicles in traffic crashes and must be completed for each commercial motor vehicle involved in the crash. From the perspective of recording information in the CR3, motor vehicles with a body style coded as truck tractor, bus, or yellow school bus is automatically considered a CMV, and the CMV section must be completed. Why should carrier information be recorded in the CR3? Commercial motor vehicles, or CMVs, are complex vehicles, often with a cab and one or more attached trailers. The type of commerce a vehicle is involved in is critical to determine which laws and regulations apply to the operation of the vehicle. CMV carrier information, such as the carrier identification number, corporate name, and complete physical address of the principal place of business, is crucial to locate the company, conduct follow-ups to gather more information, and perform relevant safety assessments. What is a carrier? A motor carrier is defined as any for hire carrier of property or passengers by motor vehicle, any private carrier of property by motor vehicle, or the entity responsible for the operation of the vehicle at the time of the crash. A motor carrier can be a common carrier, which provides transportation services to the public. A contract carrier provides transportation under specific contracts or agreements that do not fall under the definition of a common carrier. A motor carrier can also be a specialized carrier such as a trucking company franchised to transport articles which, because of size, shape, weight, or other inherent characteristics, require special equipment for lading, unloading, or transporting. A private carrier maintains its own fleet of trucks to transport its own freight. When to enter carrier information in the CR3 the carrier fields in the CMV section of the CR3 form record information about the carrier's identification type, identification number, corporate name, and primary address. The primary address field has multiple components, such as the street number, street name, street prefix, street suffix, PO box, and zip code. Not all primary address components are always applicable. The street name, street number, and zip code are the most important. Carrier information must be entered any time the 10,001 pounds plus transporting hazardous material or 9 plus capacity indicator in the CMB section is checked. The 10,001 pounds plus indicator is checked when any motor vehicle or towed vehicle has a gross vehicle weight rating or registered gross vehicle weight, whichever is greater, of 10,001 pounds or more, or any combination of vehicles where the gross combined weight rating or the combined registered gross vehicle weight is 10,001 pounds or more. The transporting hazardous material indicator is checked whenever any motor vehicle or truck trailer combination is transporting hazardous materials that is required to be placarded under the Hazardous Materials Transportation Act. The 9 plus capacity indicator is checked whenever any motor vehicle has a passenger seating capacity of 9 or more, including the driver, and used for the transportation of persons. Determining what carrier information to enter in the CR3. 
Most carriers operating a CMV are assigned an alphanumeric identification number by one or more regulatory agencies such as the United States Department of Transportation, Interstate Commerce Commission, or Texas Department of Transportation. This regulatory agency corresponds to the carrier ID type in the CR3 form, and the associated identification number is the carrier ID number. Information on both fields can be found on the shipping manifest, but it is also usually displayed on the truck door or any visible area of the vehicle. The carrier ID type may not be available if the vehicle is being operated for personal use and the vehicle operation field is coded as personal. The vehicle operation field identifying the type of commerce can be determined through the bill of lading and destination information. Other elements of the carrier fields, such as the carrier's corporate name and carrier's primary address, depends on the entity responsible for the operation of the vehicle. Because the vehicle can be a hired carrier or a private carrier, the carrier itself may or may not be the actual owner of the vehicle as shown on the registration receipt. Let's look at some examples. John Doe is the registered owner and operator of a truck leased to ABC Transport, a for-hire carrier. The truck is involved in a crash while being operated by John Doe. In this scenario, ABC Transport is the motor carrier and should be used to complete the carrier's corporate name and carrier's primary address fields. XYZ Trucking, a leasing company, is the registered owner and operator of a truck leased to ABC Transport, the leasee. The truck is involved in a crash while being operated by an employee of ABC Transport. In this case, ABC Transport is the motor carrier and should be used to complete the carrier's corporate name and carrier's primary address fields. 123 Hall is the registered owner and operator of a motor vehicle rented to Jane Doe under a short-term rental agreement. The motor vehicle is involved in a crash while being operated by Jane Doe to move household furniture. In this situation, 123 Hall is the motor carrier and should be used to complete the carrier's corporate name and the carrier's primary address fields. Note that complete information may not be available for all carrier-related fields if the vehicle is being operated for personal use and the vehicle operation field is coded as personal. If a vehicle registered to an individual is being used to haul personal items, use the registered owner's name and address to complete the carrier's corporate name and carrier's primary address fields. Steps for completing carrier information in the CR3 If the CMV unit exists, the unit description field is coded as a motor vehicle, towed or pushed vehicle, or a trailer, and the hit and run flag is set to no. The following information should be entered in the CMV section of the CR3. Enter the vehicle operation information based on the code sheet values listed in the CR3 form. Enter carrier ID type based on the code sheet values listed in the CR3 form. If the vehicle operation is personal, code carrier ID type as none. Carriers operating interstate commerce will normally have a U.S. Department of Transportation or U.S. DOT number. They may also have an Interstate Commerce Commission or ICC number, Motor Carrier or MC number, Texas Department of Transportation or TxDOT number, or an ID number issued by another state. If a carrier has more than one ID number, prioritize the ID type as follows. U.S. DOT, ICC. Text dot. Other. If carrier ID type is not available, select None. Enter the carrier ID number. If a carrier ID type is coded as None, then leave this field blank. The required number of digits or characters differ by carrier ID type. For example, the ID number length is 8 digits if the carrier ID type is ICC, MC, or USDOT, and 10 characters if carrier ID type is Text dot. If carrier ID number is unknown, leave the field blank. Enter the carrier's corporate name and the carrier's primary address, which is the primary business address of the carrier. Both carrier's corporate name and carrier's primary address are free form fields. Not applicable and unknown are not valid carrier's primary address street prefix values. A few things to keep in mind. It is essential to distinguish issues related to the recording of CMV information versus data entry errors in the online report submission platform. The carrier's corporate name and carrier's primary address are important fields that may be prone to data entry error. Because they are both free form fields, please ensure that you always double check entries for unintended alphanumeric or non-alphanumeric characters, incorrect street numbers, misspelled street names, incorrect street suffix, and incorrect zip code or invalid zip code length. Helpful resources. If you need help with any portion of the CR3 crash report, there are a variety of resources that can help.
you may call the Chris Help Desk at 844-CRIS-HLP or use their chat function and review the CR100 guidance document. There are also crash data analysis trainings and FMCSA tip cards for CMV crashes, all of which you can access online at no cost. This is the end of the segment for completing carrier-related fields in the CR3. If you wish to learn more about how the CR3 crash data is connected to other systems and how it affects decision making, please continue to watch. How CR3 crash data is connected to other systems. While it may seem like the main uses of your CR3 crash reports are insurance companies and courts, the reality is that your data is connected to many systems maintained by Texas agencies. Without even knowing it, you may have contributed to and benefited from these systems. When you complete a CR3 crash form or make a traffic stop, you access data from three statewide systems through your agency software, driver's license, department of motor vehicles, and the roadway data system. These data systems provide you with the information to support your safety. The Texas Department of Public Safety Driver's License Division has custodial responsibility of the Texas Driver Data System, which contains nearly 23 million records. This database ensures you have up-to-date driver's license information when you have a traffic encounter. The driver's system maintains all critical information including driver's personal information, license type, endorsements, status, conviction history, crash involvement, and driver training. The state's driver data system interacts with the National Driver Registers Problem Driver Pointer System and the Commercial Driver's License Information System. The Texas Department of Motor Vehicles has custodial responsibility for the state's vehicle data system that maintains all vehicle title and registration records in the registration and title system. Critical information related to ownership and identification of the state's vehicles, such as vehicle make, model, year of manufacture, body type, and title brands is stored in RTS. TexDMV validates every vehicle identification number via the Vintelligence verification software. The state provides title information for original Texas titles and salvage and non-repairable titles to the National Motor Vehicle Title Information System. This system ensures you have accurate vehicle information during traffic encounters. The Texas Department of Transportation is the agency responsible for collecting and maintaining the roadway information for the state. Roadway and traffic data elements are maintained within a statewide linear referencing system. Through the system, TxDOT maintains data on over 300,000 miles of public road. When you provide geographic reference points, it enables linkages between road, traffic data, bridge, and pavement condition databases in the Geospatial Roadway Inventory Database. Local data is submitted to TxDOT then validated to be included in the system. Crash data flows into three primary registry types, EMS or trauma registries, CRIS, and local agency record management systems. The EMS and trauma registries are managed by the Department of State Health Services Office of Injury Prevention. The Texas EMS and trauma registries is an online reporting system that collects legislatively mandated data on all EMS runs, traumatic brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, submersions, and other traumatic injuries based upon a specified criterion. The purpose of registries is to monitor and analyze the EMS and trauma care systems. Data is used to perform epidemiological investigations to identify public health issues and support injury prevention projects, which ultimately improve the efficiency and quality of care that patients receive in Texas. This data is used by the Texas Traffic Records Coordinating Committee to investigate a variety of traffic safety related issues, including the examination of EMS response time and impacts of not getting individuals involved in crashes to trauma hospitals within the golden hour. This information informs infrastructure improvements and resource allocation to support all first responders. CRIS is the central repository for crash records. Crash data is used by many traffic safety stakeholders to conduct problem identification, project prioritization, and resource allocation. Problem identification is conducted for the Highway Safety Plan. The Crash Analysis and Visualization tool is used to enhance the process of selecting safety projects to submit for HSIP funding consideration. Many law enforcement agencies are using data-driven strategies to make decisions on staffing and scheduling, which includes using crash data. CRIS data flows into the Fatality Analysis Reporting System which is a nationwide census providing NHTSA, Congress, and the American public yearly data regarding fatal injuries suffered in motor vehicle traffic crashes. 
Crash data also flows into each law enforcement agency's own record management system that houses their agency data. Agencies use this data to inform decisions and identify areas that need increased enforcement. Information from law enforcement agencies' RMSs flow into court CMSs. Texas does not have a unified court system and lacks a statewide citation system. Instead, courts and law enforcement agencies are independent of one another regarding the management of citations. There are numerous court management systems and records management systems in use by courts and law enforcement agencies around the state. Consequently, there is no citation data uniformity across the state and records are created and stored by each individual agency instead of a central reporting system and repository. Chris and court CMS data flow into driver records. In some cases, a court may require an individual to seek drug or alcohol treatment. Documentation of court-ordered treatment fulfillment resides in the court CMS. As you can see, the information you provide has lasting effect because it is used to support safety, funding, and infrastructure decisions across the state and in your community. Thank you for your commitment to providing quality data.